Hello, folks. Steve Lynch here with Discover Options here at Option View Systems. Welcome to this edition of three different S&P 500 market timing reports for advanced options traders. This will be for Friday, ending on March 16th, getting ready for the uh, Monday on March 19th. Presented material today is for educational purposes only. Should not be construed as personalized financial advice. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Three different market timing reports for advanced options traders. This includes the one for butterfly condor uh, traders, uh, bull put spread traders, as well as those just wanting a statistical look at where the market is likely to go. Before we get started, please click on the um, subscribe button. We would love for you to get alerted uh, with emails or, uh, excuse me, notifications within YouTube as to when we come out with new videos. And also, uh, we have a free ebook for those of you that do not have this, Simple Steps to Options Trading Success, co-authored by myself and Jim Graham. Just click the link, give us your data, and then we'll get that right out to you. All right, all three reports pertain to the current market condition defined in three different dimensions, price action, trend, and then the stochastics situation. In terms of price action, Thursday was a downswing bar, and then Friday was an inside bar with a lower high and a higher low. That price action took place above the 50-day simple moving average, so we are in a gentle uptrend here. And then in terms of the 15-3 stochastic, we are between 45 and 85 um, in, in that range. And then the uh, stochastic is trending underneath the three-day simple moving average or the percent D. All three dimensions make up for a market condition that's um, occurred roughly 70 times since January of 2000. This is kind of unique. We're in an uptrend. The stochastic is in a downtrend, and then we have an inside bar that follows a downswing bar. Pretty unique. Pretty unique. So we're going to see how this condition, uh, 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 you know, how it plays into uh, the, the, the strategies of selling premium from a neutral perspective. So let's go to the Condor Butterfly timing report. So since January of 2000, there have been roughly 4,569 daily closes of the S&P 500. Now, of those 4,569, 64.7 have been favorable bars for selling options premium, where the actual 21 bar subsequent movement was less than the movement that was being implied by the option prices. Okay, now that's a favorable situation. If the if the if the option prices are implying a fatter move than what actually happens, that's good, and that's occurred in the S and P 500 64 point seven percent of the time. Now, our current condition, as I described, has occurred seventy times. Of those seventy occurrences, seventy two point eight percent of the bars have been similarly favorable for premium selling. That's more than the baseline history going back to Jan of 2000. And that's more to quite an extent, about 8.1% uh, more. So that's a, a premium selling edge that we calculate. So statistically, it's more likely than usual that our current market condition will end up being a favorable one for market neutral option premium selling. Okay, so that's it for the Condor Butterfly Timing Report. Looking pretty good. Is it a guarantee you'll make money? Well, certainly not. But if you look at past occurrences of this condition, all right, it's more likely than normal that, that the uh, uh, market will be less active than what is implied by the option prices. Now, for those of you that like to lean bullish and maybe lean your condors bullish or your butterflies bullish, or perhaps you're selling put premium a standard deviation away uh, uh, 30 days out, and that's what's um, predicated here in, in the bull put spread timing report. Um, we can see a, some, a, a pretty good selling edge here. So as I mentioned before, since January of 2000, we've had 4,569 daily closes of the S&P 500. Of those, 82.9% of those bars have been favorable for selling put premium, standard deviation away, 30 days out, where the actual downside movement, 
the 21 bar or 30 day calendar day, downside movement was less than what was being implied by the uh, SIBO skew adjusted uh, 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 VIX um, implied movement to the downside. So roughly 83% of the time, the market does not move down and hit that one standard deviation level. Roughly 17% of the time, the market does move down a full standard deviation and would hit that short strike where you're selling that put premium uh, down there. Now, our current condition, as I mentioned, has occurred 70 times. Of those 70 times, look at this, 92.8% of the time, the market did not move down and hit that. It stayed above that one standard deviation level. And it would have been a favorable time to sell put premium, 92.8% of the time. This implies a put premium selling edge of 9.9%. So statistically, it's more likely than usual that this market condition will end up being a favorable one for selling out of the money put premium. Very interesting. All right, so that's it for the bull put spread timing report. Looking pretty good. Is it a guarantee? Well, certainly not. We can see that a small percentage of the time it did move down and hit that one standard deviation level. But it's if 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 the past history of this condition is any kind of uh, uh, has any bearing on the future in terms of uh, uh, the statistics of it, it certainly looks favorable from this perspective. Now. Finally, we go to the market likelihood report, and here what we do is, is we answer the question, based upon past occurrences of the current market condition, what is the market likely to do? Go up, down, or wobble around for a bit? And to answer that, we have to look at what we call price distribution bands. Price distribution bands. And here we have five-day bands set above the close and underneath the close, we go out one standard deviation five days out, both above and beneath the close. And by the way, we skew these using the SIBO skew a publication uh, because the out of the money calls have a lower implied volatility than the out of the money puts, which have a higher implied volatility. That's why the uh, bands to the downside are a little bit farther away than the bands to the upside. All right. So the question here then is over the course of the next five days, will the market go up and hit the upper band? Will it go down and hit the lower band? Or will it wobble around and hit neither of the bands? And we, and we uh, keep track of this for all the closes going back in time, all the way to January of 2000. And we keep those statistics not only on the five-day band, but the 10-day bands as well as the 15-day bands. And we compile those statistics and report them here, right at the top. So over the course of 4,569 daily occurrences, the upper five-day band has been struck 22% of the time. The upper 10-day band, 16.5. 15-day band, 15.7. On the downside, the lower bands, the lower five-day, 16.5, 16.7, and then 19.6. So. These statistics are the benchmark levels over the course of history for the S&P 500. Now, let's go to our current market condition that's occurred in here, including our current one. We have 71 here. Of these occurrences of our current market condition as they've occurred in the past, the upper five-day band was struck 16.9% of the time. That's a bit less often than the benchmark of 22. Do you see that? That's why we have this little red number there, which is reflecting the difference between the two. In fact, all six bands, upper and lower, 5, 10, and 15-day bands, all six bands were struck less often than the historical baseline. Do you see that? Some of these by quite a bit. So this is a picture of lower market volatility that ensues typically from this current market condition that we have lower market volatility. Now, does it mean that the bands will never get struck? Well, no. You could see that the bands do get struck seldom. Okay, 7%, 7%, almost 10, about 12 and a half, 11, about 16, 7. So judging from this, okay, what do you think that the, uh, if you were to lean a certain market direction, which direction would you lean? Okay? The lower bands are getting struck less often 
by far than the upper bands. You see that? So if you had to lean this a certain way, you would lean to the bullish side because these lower bands are getting struck way less often than the upper bands. Although all in all, you're looking at a picture of lower market volatility since all six of the bands were struck less often. Okay, so that's just a little nuance. Now what I like to do is give us an advantage going into Monday's open so that if during the course of Monday price exceeds Friday's high, we have a picture of what the distribution has looked like in the past over the course of the 42 occurrences where the previous day's high was exceeded. And in this case, you could see clearly that all six bands were struck less often um, and, and by quite a bit. Although the um, what's interesting is this lower 15-day band uh, got struck about the same, but you see a clear picture. And then if price exceeds the low of Friday, you could see five of the six bands were struck less often uh, by quite a bit as well. So that's it for the market likelihood report. Overall, all in all, a picture of lower market volatility. Okay, hope this is helpful in your trading in the coming week. I'm Steve Lentz with Discover Options. Thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next week. Have a good day. Bye-bye.